Hello folks and welcome to Monaco. Uh, welcome to Saturday morning in Monaco. I realise I've been remiss in not making a vlog yet this weekend. My apologies for that. But welcome to the fishing village. Welcome to Monte Carlo. It's lovely to be back. The week has been intense. We get here a day earlier uh, than for any other race. Uh, because we've got so much more to do and also because they have a Friday off. It's a, it's a day off racing. It's not a day off work. Not for the drivers, not for anybody. It's actually one of the busiest days from a media perspective of the entire year um, because you've got that extra day. Um, but it was a good one yesterday, actually. I interviewed Mika Hakkinen for my book, which was a joy. Uh, more on that later, probably, throughout the year. Probably do a vlog on it at some point. Um, but I wondered, what can I, what can I show you about Monaco that you've never seen? What can I show you about Monaco that actually gives you some insight into what Monaco is about? And I think Monaco is, well, Monaco Grand Prix, it's like a swan. It looks very serene and beautiful. And yet under the surface are the legs and the feet paddling away, making it all work. The, the side of Monaco that you don't see is what makes it able to look so, I think, sort of serene and beautiful. Where's everything kept? Where's everything stored? And in particular, where do you put the support races? The Formula One pit lane, if I can turn around, over there, we know where the Formula One pit lane is. We know this year it's got beautiful new pit buildings. But what about the F2? Where do they live? Um, I spent years in GP2, which is now F2. So this place is kind of, yeah, it was home for me for a very long time. Uh, so I'm going to take you on a little tour through the back streets of Monte Carlo to a place we know as Alcatraz, because it is up on a rock and it's where the Formula Two guys and cars um, are kept over a weekend. May seem like a fairly dull thing for a vlog, but frankly, I couldn't think of anything else to do. And it's got a little bit of meaning to me. So come on, let's go for a journey. So here we are, um, up high on the harbour walls, and it's bright, man. Um, anyway, I wanted to stop halfway um, because I wanted to show you something that's missing. Um, for years, people genuinely believed that the, uh, the NBC crew weren't actually at Monaco, that they were on a green screen, but they always filmed from just over there. Behind me, you can't see, just over there. There's another TV crew uh, actually in the spot where the NBC guys used to be, which is really kind of sad because um, I'm really missing uh, having David and Lee and Steve um, and actually the whole crew here um, this year because this was always the first race that we always all got together. Um, and it feels very odd not having them here. We had a lovely time together, some really happy memories. Morning, mate. Um, really, really happy memories. Uh, I think my one of my happiest memories of all the time that we spent together um, during those occasions was actually our Indy 500 party, which we always had on Sunday afternoon after the race, whether it was in Stars and Bars, the restaurant, um, just down by the F1 paddock, or actually one of my favorite ones was um, in our hotel in Beaulieu sur mer uh, We would stop on the way home and we would either buy pizzas or really filthy roadside burgers. I mean, like, borderline food poisoning from those things. Um, so good. Um, and we'd hook up either someone's mobile phone or laptop that they'd managed to get the 500 on and hook it up. One year we actually listened to um, to, to uh, the Speedway radio. It was the only thing we could get was, was the radio. Um, and we listened to it really old school, just on the radio, eating burgers. Um, yeah, magic times. So um, yeah, that's where the boys were. They were, they, they were on their little on their little stage behind me, just over there. And um, yeah, I miss you guys, really do. Um, the whole crew. So, um, yeah, Monaco, not quite the same this year. A little bit different. Um, so yeah, much love to the boys. Right, let's carry on our little tour. Uh, so this, is Alcatraz um, and as you can see as walks to work go 
not bad when uh, when your view is the Côte d'Azur it is not uh, yeah not half bad hey Noemi hey. <laughs> 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 Hello. Um, so you see um, it is officially well we know it is Alcatraz uh, officially known as parking des pêcheurs which means uh, the car park for the fishermen uh, all the f1 media park in the lower two or three floors but the top two floors uh, in the old days were used as the overfill car park for all of the f1 trucks once they'd set up the motorhomes they'd all go and park there they don't park there anymore they actually park up on top of a hill coming down into uh, into monte carlo itself this is now used as the paddock for formula 2 uh, Formula 3 for GP3 as well. There is no GP3 this weekend. Um, the World Series by Renault cars have always been on completely the other side of Monaco over at the tennis club. This has always been sort of the exclusive domain of GP2, uh, now F2. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I'll take you in there in a second so you can see it because there's the whole kind of paddock set up but in a garage and I believe uh, on the weekends where there is no F1 in town you can actually go karting uh, in the area that is used as the GP2, sorry, F2 paddock, uh, run by none other than former GP2 driver, Clivio Piccioni. So there you go, a random fact. Anyway, let's go to Alcatraz. So, um, so that's Alcatraz. Uh, it's a really cool place, actually. I love it. I got a lot of happy memories um, from working up here. Really happy memories, actually, of watching current F1 stars kind of ply their trades here in Monaco. I remember uh, the first year we came here, first few years we came here, actually, we only had one race, uh, which meant the weekend was over really early, kind of like in the F3000 days, uh, when they only had one race on the Saturday. Uh, which meant the Saturday night was crazy, crazy fun. Uh, but here in Monaco, the early GP2 days, I'd be home, back at my home in Switzerland, by the time the Grand Prix started on uh, on Sunday, which is really nutty, kind of thinking back to it. Uh, now, I remember Lewis Hamilton, first year here, and there was just something extraordinary about that red and white car that he was driving with the yellow helmet flying through the streets. It seemed, uh, yeah, for any of us that grew up as like fans of Senna, I don't want to over-egg the omelette, but you know what I mean? It kind of seemed, um, it seemed really, really special. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is Alcatraz. This is, it's one of those places around Monaco that you don't really know is here until you come here. Um, and that walk to work is so beautiful in the mornings. And I was just talking to somebody up here, um, a, a colleague for many years, and he reminded me that there were an awful lot of years where the mornings didn't seem so pretty in Monaco because it's fairly difficult not to end up on a boat party or at a bar, um, having, shall we say, a bit too much fun. And so the mornings in Monaco always feel a little bit hideous, and yet they're the best time of day when the city, when the principality, when the streets are still vaguely empty, when the sun is just rising over the ocean, and when, because of the night before, pretty much everybody is in bed, fast asleep, and will not be waking up until at least the crack of noon, um, they're actually some of the best hours of the day uh, here in, in Monaco. And uh, yeah, incredibly fortunate uh, to be able to call this a walk to work. Um, incredibly fortunate to be at, as it's been dubbed by uh, people far more eloquent than me, the grandest Grand Prix of them all.